Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video, and this is going to be a follow-up video to something that I've made about three months ago. Uh, editor, you can include the thumbnail on top, which is where we discussed potential state of power creep when Imbibitor Lune first came out. Uh, the reason why I want to talk about this is, is a little bit is because of, as you will know by now, Archeron. I feel that after the past couple of days since she has been released, it is to no one's surprise that she has currently went above and beyond all of our expectations when it comes to damage numbers right when it comes to what a dps is is capable of doing aircron has proven that e0s1 e0s0 e2s1 that even e6s5 she pretty much dominates every other dps that has came before her and i think that by now if people still do not want to accept this as fact then uh, respectfully i do believe that they are coping in all sense of the word she has made a very significant impact with regards to what we are used to seeing for our damage numbers from uh from a dps right i would say that as someone that has pretty much played with every single dps since 1.0 every single at least every single limited five star dps since 1.0 impact that aircron has on our current dps ranking it is i would say much more impactful compared to any of our previous successors right i think the closest thing we had two phases that, that were really really big the first one being in bibi to lune which at his base form was a very big step up compared to our previous dps classes such as Silla, jingyuan uh, blade all the kind of stuff and then came along jing liu which wasn't that bad but she was still really really strong in a sense where she offered a very low bear to entry for new players for players without good relics in building a good hyper carry team comp because of her free 100 crit value or 50 percent crit rate so even though Qing Liu came after in Bitter uh it was still pretty clear that both of these units still shine uh, quite well in their respective fields but now with the introduction of Akron, her damage output is so high to the point where very few if ever any dp can come close to what she has to offer not simply from a perspective of a final damage output but also from the perspective of what is required for Aircron to do said damage output which is one of the key strengths of Qing Liu which is you can get her up very very easily and she can do a lot of that right so for Aircron, she she pretty much offers everything that you would need in a dps i don't think we need to talk much about damage numbers because i'm pretty sure you have seen by now the ridiculous amounts of damage that you can output from e0 s0 all the way to e6 s5 numbers that you have pretty much never seen before in your entire lives until Aircron came into play though i do want to point out uh, a lot of these damage numbers one could say they might be inflated because uh, it is AOE effect and it will still deal damage to mobs that are dead, right? So something to keep in mind. But even without that, it is still undeniable that on a single target, her ultimate still deals ridiculous amounts of damage. It is not just this damage output alone, but it is how often you can use this ultimate, which takes Archon to the next level. I think an excellent comparison with this Archon is like, can you imagine if Imbibitor Rune can use his 3 skill point enhanced basic attack twice in a single turn? It is pretty much like E2, but you have this at the get-go at E0 because you can make this a reality with using the right setup. And we have seen after playing Hongai Story for a while by now, you can achieve this with Pella, Silver Wolf, Black Swan, even Kui Naifen, and she can very, very consistently get a one-turn ultimate. I, I do think that this high frequency as well as high damage is what makes Akron such a leaks leaks above the rest compared to the rest of the damage dealers in fact i would say that for Akron specifically she's probably deserving of her own tail for the first time it happens i genuinely believe that she deserves a special tier for Akron alone she's just so high up above everyone else just it, it doesn't make sense for them to be for her to be in the same class as in between and Jin at this point and that's just for the damage numbers alone so now let's talk about the issue of not not issue her her ease of access right her ease of access which is she is able to make use of units that players previously were not able to make use of and there's a point that i've brought up frequently in my Archron analysis you can now make use of even units like Kui Naifen 
to make Akron do ridiculous amounts of that. You can now make use of units like Fire MC. With assuming that you do have a trend of universal market, and you don't have to tie down your Ting Yun and Huo Huo to Akron. You can now fully dedicate your Ting Yun and Huo Huo to the other team and make them deal the maximum benefit. Because the previous issue that we had. Uh, from other DPSs was that they had to share, right? A lot, a lot of DPS. In fact, every single DPS in the game with their only exception being Blade, every single one of them wanted Ting Yun. Every single one of them wanted Huo Huo. Aircron provides this alternative path that she doesn't even need them and still deal tremendous amounts of damage. Not only does she have ridiculous vertical scaling, she also have excellent horizontal investment value for players who want to just make two different teams. She is pretty much like your DOT, except she doesn't make use of DOT. She just makes use of your leftover units that you wouldn't even use. And now you can make your second team perform in their maximum potential by making use of units like Huo Huo and Tianyun. Because of this reason, Akron, I would say, is a very, very a free-to-play friendly unit because no other DPS offer the similar level of horizontal investments to Aircron. But of course, we can't just talk only about Aircron strike. We, we do have to talk a little bit about weaknesses, right? Because this is not an Aircron dick sucking competition, right? We do have to talk a little bit about weaknesses. Despite all her glory, there are still some downsides to Aircron, although these downsides, they are very, very easily overcome. Unlike, you know, for example, units mechanics like Lightning Lord, right? Which is, you can't really change that. Oh yeah, for units like Akron, one downside is compared to, for example, Ting Liu, you do need to have a quite a good number of, of, of crit value to make her work, right? You can't really expect her to perform without a satisfactory crit value. But then again, this downside, it pretty much befalls upon every single DPS that we see, every single hyper DPS, crit hyper carry DPS, with the exception of Qingliu because of the free 50% crit rate. So Aircron will also face this similar issue. If you don't have a good enough crit rate or crit damage, she's not going to perform as much as you want. But that being said, my counterpoint is, given the same number of investment you would have given to Akron, she will be the best performer compared to every other crit DPS. So if your Akron is, let's just say, 70% crit with 120% crit damage, it's not great. For every other crit DPS, like your Impetu Rune, your Silla, your Jingyuan, your Himiko, your Herda, your Yanqing, your... Everyone else, Akron will probably be the one that will make use of this 70% crit, 120% crit damage to the highest efficiency because of her ridiculous damage multipliers as well as how frequently you can cast ultimate, right? So that's my counterpoint. Another point that uh, players may face when using Akron is they simply don't have set nihility units because although Akron is comfortable in the sense that it allows you to make use of units that you previously were not making use of, such as your Queen Iphone, Pella, Wolf, and now you can use your team and you still have to use those nihility units. So if you don't have when I have Pella, Seal Wolf, Black Swan, then one could say Akron would be a little bit difficult when it comes to team building. All right, so compared to like your your normal hyper carries, like your uh your Jing Liu, your Invisible Lune, they can pretty much function even without um the nihility units, right? Because we also have harmony units, right? The counterpoint to that is for now, maybe at the very start of the game, you won't have access to a lot of these the units. But if you want to take a look at everybody at the same starting line, which is if nobody have any of the units, like if you don't have Ting, you don't have Project, you don't have Sparkle, then even your normal hyper carries, such as a, let's just say like your, your, your let's just say you're starting this game right now and you were to pull for Ting Liu, right? If you don't have Ting Yun, don't have Bronya, don't have Sparkle, don't have Pella, you're, you only have like, let's just say you only have like uh, Asta and, 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 and like, I don't know, like Hanya. Or like, let's just say you have like Asta and Hanya or like Asta and Yukong, an easy old Yukong. Jing Liu herself would also not perform as up to par as you would like it to be. Right? So this problem, it doesn't just pick Akron once again. It also picks your other hyper carry DPS units. So once again, although this is a weakness, it is not a weakness that is only shared by Akron. I think that is pretty much most of it. The fundamental point is for Akron, I do believe that she sets a slightly concerning future for Hongai Star Rail, which is how are we going to balance the future units as well as previous units going forward? If we were to set a president now where Akron is extremely, extremely strong, how strong will future DPS units be? in comparison with Akron. Would it be the same? Would it be worse? Would it be better? And relative to that, how will our older DPS units perform compared to the newer DPS and Akron, right? So example, if you were a player that 
Okay. As much as we don't want to compare these two, we have to compare these two because it is the they are the only two units that share so much in common. Jingyuan and Akron. They are both lightning, they are both trade DPS, and they both function as a hyper carry, right? For a player, let's just say you're a player who only picked up your Jingyuan as your other limited DPS and you compare it to a friend that just joined the game. They just joined the game and they picked up Akron as a limited DPS and you yourself, you, you're not putting for Akron because you have Jingyuan, right? You're gonna notice that the player that started later in Honkai Star, they're gonna have a much easier time clearing the content because of her relative strength compared to Jingyuan. It is nothing personal. It is just a matter of fact, right? So I am a little bit concerned even from my perspective, right, because I'm not going to hide it, my chat decided to be an excellent, excellent community and they decided to um, support my funding for my own E6S5 Akron. I would say that I feel very, very fortunate, very, very blessed for Akron or Alcron, as you would say, to be my first E6S5. Because God forbid, if I were to ever E6S5 any of the previous DPSs, such as Silla, Jingyuan, Blade, um, Imbibitor, Dune, Jingliu, all these crit hyper carry, they are not even close to the amount of damage that Aircron at E6S5 is going to perform. And that's just one example I'm seeing. So even for Wales, it might not set a good taste if all their previous E6S5, they're not even close to the amount of damage that you're going to be dealing with Akron, right? Although at this point, it is, it is completely irrelevant because at this point, you're just pulling for who you love, right? If you love a unit, you're going to E6S5 them, like regardless of how much you're going to do. But going forward into the future, if like this is going to be the president, for players that don't care about like the wife or hands bundles and they want to care about like meta, they want to care about min-maxing, how would they go about trying to justify a DPS pooling option? Will you just say, oh shit, Maybe next time Mihoyo will just release like another unit that's like similar to Akron or even stronger than Akron. So why would I ever need to pull for any of the reruns? Which by the way, I don't think you should ever pull for reruns in Hong Kai Story, but that's a completely different matter. Yeah, so like it makes players wonder, right? It makes players wonder like, was their investment this entire time really worth it when like a brand new DPS just completely like stomps, stomps the, the, the previous damage categories? And not just from a pooling perspective, even for like your tracers, your relic investments, it is a little bit also like for example, if you were farming Jingyuan, you farmed the four piece flop set, you farmed his tracers to max level 10 and everything, you got his light coins, like and everything. And now, if you want to play Akron, you have to completely farm a brand new set of four piece diver as well as the, the light coin experience and, and the trace levels and everything, right? So, like, yeah, it is, that's, 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 that's pretty much my thoughts. So, this is only for DPS. I think for Harmony, we don't really feel it yet. We only have four limited support so far. Sorry, not even four, right? Three. Okay, four if we include Robin. So we have Silver Wolf, Sparkle, Rame, and the future Robin. And we do need supports quite urgently, so we don't really feel it. But in the future, if we were to get more and more um, supports, or even sustains, how are we going to look at things from like a, a long-term perspective? Because from the looks of it, new units are just getting stronger and stronger. So my personal suggestion, okay, I, I, I love this quote, right? There's no point complaining about something if you're not going to offer a possible solution to the problem that you are suggesting you're bringing up, right? So my possible suggestion is, I think the easiest way, the most direct way to kind of make things or at least make players not feel as bad when they are you know, they, they do own like these kind of units is opening up the option, a game mode where a third team is introduced. I think this is by far the straightforward, the most easiest, the easiest way to still let players use the old units that they previously used because now you need to build additional teams, right? And right now we do have two teams. Doesn't have to be implemented now, but maybe one year or even two years into the future or even three years. How would a player make use of like all these different kinds of units? So that's one possible... Um, solution that we could have. Another possible solution, restrictions on memory of chaos and pure frictions. Because right now we have buffs. We have the buffs that incentivize players to pull for new units. But I feel that at this point, we don't really even need the incentives to let new players know that, hey, this new unit is absolutely ridiculous. They're still going to pull just because they're going to kick themselves, right? So maybe in the future, they could add some kind of debuff to dissuade players from using the same comp over and over again and bring a little bit, uh, a breath of fresh air so that players are encouraged to use different kinds of units. So for example, how do we combat Akron's like ridiculous thing? Or may maybe enemies have like cleanse or like 50% like 
Ferris or something. Or like it's more difficult to apply debuffs. Something like this. So this could target Aircron, this could target DOT, all that kind of stuff. And of course, all these things are they're definitely not going to be implemented instantly, right? Because it's definitely going to hurt um, players who don't have enough teams invested, right? 100%. But I'm talking about like two, three years in the future when we like develop as a game and everybody have like so many different units. Then it could be something that might bring a breath of fresh air. Either that or we just have higher and higher and higher memory of chaos floor scalings because let's be real guys mihoyo has to come with a way to incentivize players to pull for new units if they don't increase the difficulty artificially by introducing new memory of chaos enemies or new memory of chaos flaws then what else can they do right so i think that way of increasing difficulty artificially it will incentivize players to pull for newer and stronger units, but eventually all the older units, they probably won't get that much opportunity to shine. I, I think my bottom line is a way to not make old units irrelevant. That would make this game very, very healthy. And I think this would be probably one of, if not the best gacha games I've played. If they somehow manage to find a way to make old units not completely irrelevant, that would be that would be the that would be it, right? Yeah. That is pretty much my thoughts let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and thank you so much for listening to my yep i, I this is not scripted i'm just basically talking off the top of my head because like i can't just such a it's like whoa you know it's such a boat right so yeah if you want to engage in further discussions drop it down in the comments or join my discord discord.g for this pokish village we have a very active community to go on a daily basis when i check out my stream that's true dot here as well on youtube.com for i'll be streaming almost every single day surely we'll be on discord right so that's all i have for today all the best for aircon pools by the time this video just goes live i think Akron is doing better, hopefully. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.